shit. I started a mosh pit. <laughs> Um, the other two, the Mescaline and the 2CB reports have been really popular, like my most popular videos by far. So I uh, thank you guys for that, and it's really interesting to me that everybody likes these the most of all the videos I've ever done. <laughs> but, um, so I had an experience recently, I'm going to try and keep this short because it's a very long story, so I don't want it to run too long, but I'll do my very best to try and condense it into what's useful about it. Um, I was at Tomorrow World this, this last year, uh, the one most recently in September. And uh, real quick, it was incredibly muddy. It didn't even give you the setting. Um, it was uh, Sunday that this trip happened. I'd push all, I hadn't taken any drugs the whole weekend, except for I'd saved it all for Sunday because the weather was supposed to be better. And the entire place was a cesspool all weekend. There was mud everywhere, like six inches of mud. We had bought boots from Walmart. Uh, kind of They had to put hay down uh, around the stages so it wasn't too slippery. So it's a mess. The whole weekend was a mess. It was a nightmare. Um, so, anyways, so it's Sunday, and I decided I was just going to candy flip really hard one day to kind of make up for the other days that uh, the weather was so bad. And um, I took 300 micrograms of LSD, uh, which is the most I've ever taken, but I've taken it before. I had done 300 micrograms before, but at home in a much more secure and safe environment. And so um, I took the 300 micrograms, and within 30 minutes, I came up incredibly quickly because I had this burning in my throat. I've never had a burning sensation like that. It was kind of like menthol or Vicks VapoRub. Um, it was pleasant. I enjoyed the burn, but I knew it was going to come on really strong because I've never felt any sensations like that so quickly before. And um, But it was going well, and uh, so we got into the festival. We were walking from the camping area to the main festival, and it was all going good. We were with a big group of friends. And uh, I had one of my very closest friends I've known for years with me, and he becomes very important in the story later. But so about an hour or two hours in, we're, you know, we found out that all the set times had changed because they'd closed a few other stages because of the weather, and it was so muddy. And so it actually worked out in our favor because we were going to see more people that we wanted to see. And um, so this was disorientating to me, though. I'm going to try and give you guys, get in my head a little bit. I'm, you know, I'm tripping pretty hard already. And uh, the whole day's plan had shifted rather abruptly. So I was kind of trying to reconcile all of this. Uh, but I was still good. Like, I was still having a good time. And uh, we were looking at the different stages, seeing what's going on. Kind of just get a feel for everything and, like, how everything had changed since last night, since uh, the weather. Anyway, so I'm coming up pretty hard. And um, <laughs> we're just having a good time. Me and my, my close friend were talking about music and, like, the stage production and kind of analyzing things and just shooting the shit. Watching, like... This dude's partying way too hard, like, in the mud, like, rolling around the mud, dancing, like, drunk as fuck, having a good time. Uh, it's like, classic rave scene. And, uh, so, he, you know, he's smoking a joint. It's all good. And, uh, after a while, I started to forget. I was having, like, these blips of, like, not knowing exactly who I was or what I was doing there. This is just acid kicking real hard. And, uh, it wasn't, like, I wasn't scared. Like, I, like, in a general sense, I knew where I was. Like, I knew what I was doing. It's just like this kind of questioning of everything, like of reality. And, um, but I didn't mention it to him or anybody else because I didn't want to freak anybody out because nobody else was tripping besides me, uh, especially, or on, especially on as much as I was. And um, so I kind of kept that to myself. And uh, we were dancing and hanging out. And so after a while, I started to notice like all these pretty girls, two girls in particular, that were dancing. And I was like, I was just enamored by them. I just thought they were fucking gorgeous. And uh, I asked my buddy, I was like, hey, man, I'm like, should I go talk to her? Because I wanted to check with him to make sure I wasn't acting a fool. And uh, he, like, looks, and he's like, I don't know, she's not with a guy. He doesn't look like she has a boyfriend. Go ahead. So I was about to go talk to the one. She's real far away, and I had to, like, cross this thing of water to get to her. <laughs> so it didn't really seem worth the effort. But there's this other girl that I noticed who was gorgeous as well. And uh, right as I was about to go up to talk to her, I was sitting down. We were sitting down at this point. I was about to stand up and go talk to her. She started to leave, walking towards us. So, um... I seen she's leaving, walking towards us, and I tried to get her attention. I was like, hey. I started, like, waving at her, like, you know, reaching up, trying to get her attention, saying, hey, hi, well, you know, trying, just yelling at her <laughs> like an asshole. And um, so she's looking around all confused, trying to figure out where the who's trying to flag her down. So finally she looks down and sees me, and uh, I felt like Heath Ledger at that moment from The Dark Knight where he's like, you know, I'm, I'm like a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught one. And so I looked. she looks down at me, and I just go, I'm like, you're really pretty. <laughs> and it was all I got. And she looked, she looked and she laughed and she smiled at me and said, thank you. And she kept walking and she walked, walked on by. 
because I noticed well, the reason I'd done this is because I noticed that like everybody's so dressed up and wearing scantily clad clothes and everybody wants to just meet people and have a good fucking time and just talk and like nobody was really doing that everybody's kind of staying in their bubbles so I was like fuck this I want to talk to somebody and like you know she's gorgeous and she obviously like you know doesn't mind being noticed because she's like dressed in like you know feathers and I don't know <laughs> whatever she was wearing like underwear basically and um so she walked by, and my buddy's like, oh, see, no, no harm, no foul. I was like, yeah, that's, that's cool. Like, I didn't, didn't, like, hurt my feelings or anything. She said, thank you, whatever. And then, like, two minutes later, my buddy goes, hey, hey, he, like, nudges me. He's like, hey, she's standing right next to you. She came back. And I was like, what? And so I, like, look around, trying to be, like, nonchalant about it. And I see her, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, was, I was really fucked up. I didn't know what to say to her, honestly. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know if I was going to dance with her. I didn't know if I was going to, I don't know. I didn't even know what to say. I just didn't even know what I was supposed to do with her at that point. Because I, so, I was getting pretty, pretty deep into it and uh so i just ignored her and i think we left short after shortly after to go to a different stage because i just i, I was just i didn't i i didn't have any game <laughs> i was just too too far into the trip and um everything's so good we're having a good time and um at a certain point a certain artist is going martin garrix i i'm not a huge fan you know he's decent i've seen him before and but everybody else in the group kind of wanted to see him and so everybody was taking the roles and this is kind of an important thing to note is that everybody was kind of on a different frequency. I was uh, really deep into this trip on a lot of acid and everybody else was rolling. So I was more being critical, analytical, and introspective this whole time, like really kind of like thinking really deeply about everything, you know, and they're all just partying. So we're kind of all on different wavelengths in some ways. And so um, everything's going good, though. Everybody's having a good time, except for I started to get this impression that it was all really fake. And this is pretty common on acid when you're, especially if you're in a setting like this, like, you know, you start to, not like the commercialism of it or anything like that. What I was starting to think, though, is that everybody was just having a good time because of the drugs rather than the drugs enhancing an experience. And that, that was a lesson I pulled away from this was like, if the whole point of everybody having a good time or the only reason causing it is the substances, you're fucking up. And it's really not going to be a meaningful experience in the way that other ones that I've had, whereas the drugs are more incidental. It's not the focus of it. It just kind of happens to come up or it happens to be, uh, you know, uh, present and it happens to enhance an already tremendous experience. That's when they really seem to shine, as opposed to where the whole weekend had kind of sucked because of the weather, and we were trying to make up for it with the substances in some ways, which uh, I think was a mistake, looking back. And um, so I'd take my, I took 200, so after I'd taken the 300 micrograms of LSD, and this is about three or four hours into that, and I took 250 milligrams of MDMA, uh, which is also a very high dose. And so, um, Everything was good, though. Uh, we were, everybody was still, like, having a good time and dancing, although me and my buddy were on a different page than everybody else, kind of. And so he had to go to the bathroom, and he was kind of uncomfortable because um, he just wasn't gelling with everybody at the moment. So he had to go to the bathroom, so I went with him and uh, watched, you know, I was standing outside, and I, at this point I came up on the roll really hard. And this, like, I had 15 minutes of, like, pure bliss. I've never felt so good in my entire life. Like... All the effects of MDMA were, like, no social anxiety. Like, I was just talking to people. There's this gorgeous couple from Canada that, like, were all dressed up, and I was just talking to them because they're so attractive, and I was just fucking flying off the handle at this point. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, I'm just conversing with everybody, like, really just enjoying life at that moment. Like, I've never, I've never felt so euphoric in my entire life. Like, everything's connected, that whole sense that you're all one, and, um, everybody's just having a great time and there's just so much energy like the energy is just like infectious like it just it permeates everything and it's like intoxicating and um so i'm going through that my friend gets out the bathroom and i go in the bathroom and this is when things got really really squirrely um i kind of got i started thinking about things that weren't going to happen or i i began to get very confused actually was what happening two of my favorite dj artists weren't there yellow claw and carnage they weren't playing though and I was also thinking about my friend, Josh, we'll call him from home, uh, who also wasn't there. And I began to convince myself, or I was convinced, though, as I was sitting there, that everything that could possibly happen within the realm of possibility was going to happen that night. So Yellow Claw and Carnage were going to play, even though they weren't there, and my friend in Illinois was going to somehow get to Georgia instantaneously, and he's going to party with us somehow and I was convinced this was going to happen. Not only this, I was convinced that everything else that could possibly happen in the entire world was going to happen. Like, kind of like flushing a toilet bowl, or if you, like, imagine relativity the way uh, the mass of something makes things circle around it, like planets. Um, like, that it was all inevitable. That we're all being, like, it was all just going that direction. There was no stopping it. 
And given the, cert the setting, like with the stages and the music and the lights, I started to get this impression that we were all cheering on the end of the world, which was really bizarre, thinking that like everything that could happen was going to happen that night, and we're all cheering on the end of the world, because that's also inevitable, the way that everything's constantly falling apart and moving towards entropy. And uh, I could it was kind of a mind loop. It wasn't as unpleasant as other mind loops. It was just very confusing. Uh, and I was convinced of this, though. I, was, I believed it totally to be true in those moments. So my friend keeps checking on me. He's like, hey, man, he's like, you good? And he keeps checking on me. And so finally, after he checked on me a few times, he's like, yo, man, we got to get the fuck out of here. He's like, you got to get out. And I'm like, whoa, 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 because me and my friend are so cool. And I was like, what's going on? So I get out, and um, I'm going to give you a little bit of his perspective. He told me this later. He could just tell I was gone. I was in another world. I wasn't making any sense. I started talking about Yellow Claw, Carnage, Josh. And he's like, he's like, yo, he's like, dude, they're not here. They're not playing. He's like, are you all right? And he could tell I wasn't all right. <laughs> so uh i'm just talking nonsense i'd watched an alan watts podcast about like just alan watts stuff about like life talking about how it's all whoopee and like life is a firework and it's a dance and it's all you know all of life's musical and it's all just a you know you only get one note is our lives and, and in fact with one note you can't really hear the melody but it just keeps playing blah blah like i was just going off like on some existential shit and uh i was just i just kept repeating like little phrases from it i'd be like ooh, fireworks whoopee uh, like I was just <laughs> like it wasn't making any sense, and I started speaking in questions. Really bizarre, and so my friend knew I was fucked, and so he's like, I had told him a long time ago that sugar will bring someone down very quickly, um, like breads, candy, that sort of thing, because insulin is a storage hormone, and it will help metabolize the the psychedelic, you know, the psychedelic uh, component, like uh, whether it's psilocybin or LSD, it will help metabolize it and dissolve it or uh, and store it and neutralize it essentially. He remembered this amazingly, and so he he told me he's like Dan he's like, he's like put your hands on my shoulders he's like we're going somewhere I'm like where are we going he's like it's an adventure just we're just going I'm like okay <laughs> so I follow him or I follow him and he's like you want, he's like what kind of pizza you want and I was still speaking in questions I was like chicken bacon ranch and he's like and sure enough they had chicken bacon ranch pizza like go figure it was like one in a million <laughs> so he gets me the pizza but while we're standing there like a parmesan shaker thing that pizza places have it flew into an ice bath like someone chucked it and like water splashed and my friend looks at me and he's like he's like hey man did you just throw that and i was like yeah i did and he's like don't do that and i was like oh okay and apparently i'd thrown this parmesan shaker i had no I, I had no memory of this or i didn't even i don't i had no memory of doing this or i didn't even know that i did it and uh, the guys working there were just didn't know what i was going through <laughs> so we get the pizza because he's trying to get me to help me come down because he knew i was too fucked up and so uh, I eat like 75% of the pizza, but then I start spitting it out. Like, cause I, I didn't know why I was eating. I, I, I wasn't hungry. And so, uh, you know, the pieces I spit out, this cleaner guy come around with like a paper plate and he scooped it all up, like cleaned up our table with this like weird technique with the paper plate. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, oh my God, look at that. That's amazing. I was just, I was just in awe of this man's like technique with this paper plate. The guy's cleaning up the tables. And uh, so finally... I'm like, hey, man, I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? I want to go dance. And he's like, he's like, you want to go dance? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what else are we doing here? He's like, he's like, all right, I'll make you a deal. He's like, you finish your pizza, we'll go dance. I'm like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I finish my pizza, and uh, we walk over to see Flux Pavilion at this other stage. And at this, like, the whole time, though, I'm still in this, like, other world. Like, it, I no idea where I am, what I'm doing. Still feel like Yellow Claw Carnage and my friend are going to somehow show up and play, and that the world's ending, and it's all inevitable and that everything that could happen is going to happen. And so we get to Flux Pavilion, and I came down hard as fuck, like I like a rock. I sank like a rock, and I got really depressed. <laughs> Not very long. It lasted like five minutes, this like weird depression. I went, it was so bizarre going from so high to so low, and I was like, I was like, fuck. I was like, I just became miserable. I was like, really? I'm like, this is it? I'm like, all this, like, all the time and money and effort going on this trip and vacation thing at this festival, and it, I just felt like it sucked. Everything sucked. Like, the whole weekend had been difficult. And so, but I started thinking, and my friend, uh, my friend Nick pushed me, um, and uh, I'm going to have to edit that out. So anyway, so we're standing at Flux Pavilion, and my friend pushes me to, like, keep me from falling off this edge into water. And he's like, hey, man, be careful. Uh, you know, there's, you know, there's an, I'm like, oh, okay. But then I started to get the impression my friend was taking care of me, and um, We've never, we never had to take care of each other before, and I thought this was really weird. And I started, uh, slowly, my memory started coming back, and um, I started remembering all the things that had, had happened, or some of them. 
And I start, I, I looked over at my friend, and I was like, hey, man, I'm like, have you been taking care of me, like, the last however long? And he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, he's like, he's like, you were pretty fucked up. And I was like, oh, like, I'm so sorry, dude. And I was coming down, like, really quickly. And I was like, he started telling me everything that happened. And there's a lot of parts that I have even missed, honestly. But um, when I was in the bathroom, it felt like five minutes to me. Uh, he said it was actually half an hour I'd been in the bathroom. That's why he forced me to get out because I, I wasn't listening. And so I was getting incredible time dilation. Like what, what minutes felt like to me were like hours in, in some sense. Because uh, this whole event took place in an hour. All this shit that happened um, and that the group of friends had come back to see if I was okay while I was eating the pizza and they couldn't figure out why I was spitting it out. Everybody was super confused, but he, he got them away. He told them to go away. He'd take care of me because we've been through all this each, with each other before. And, uh, which is a fan. I didn't remember any of that though. I didn't remember them coming to check on us. I, I was so unaware of all this. And, uh, my friend, we've been friends for so long. He's been there before. He was the only, like, really, if there's a lesson out of this is only do like, have a good trip sitter with you or a close friend who's going to take care of you no matter what to the bitter end because he did everything perfectly. The pizza thing was genius that I had told him from so long ago because that brought me down. That worked. I couldn't believe that actually worked. That was amazing. And um, he just took care of me like perfectly. Like So shouts out to him. So always be with people you can trust that are going to have your best interest in mind and like take care of your safety because really a lot of people would probably call that a terrible trip. It really wasn't that bad to me. It was worse for my friend honestly because like Nothing bad happened to me. Like, I didn't get hurt. I didn't, like, lose my mind. Uh, nothing bad happened. It was just really confusing and insane in my mind. But uh, and it was temporary, though. So uh, that and I took too much. That was the other thing I took away. If you're going to mix substances like that, I have candy flip before, and I've taken all these dosages before. But when you combine them, it becomes a totally different beast. And uh, I, looking back in hindsight, I wish I would have done 200 micrograms of acid and, like, 150 or 200... Um, milligrams of MDMA as opposed to what I'd done because that was just so much like it was just, it was just too much there was a, I'd never taken too much before in my entire life and that time I took too much and it all th also is a testament though to how safe they are because like I took too much and nothing bad happened really my friend took care of me I acted a fool for a little while I got really confused but all in all everybody went home safe I was fine the next day it was all good but it was for the, that hour it was like total insanity um so if that, whatever that's worth for you guys, uh, I really wish I'd remember that saying, um, <laughs> the, the, well, that would have helped me then. But, uh, just so you guys remember, cars are real, cliffs are real, cops are real. You can't fly. It's never a good time to die. And do remember, eventually you will come down until next time. Have a good one. Peace. Yeah, yeah,